we have seen today during the MPI reminds me of the Gremlins movies of the 80s. Those Gremlins that are cute and fluffy until you poured water on them, when they frankly turned pretty feral and became very hard to handle. And that's what we've just seen from the Liberal Party here in the MPI. The cute and fluffy Liberals have turned up to the Assembly today and gone, oh, climate change, we're into that, we'll take action. They've obviously dried themselves off. Mr Coe has spent most of the week being the gremlin covered in water. We've seen extraordinary reaction from the Canberra Liberal Party to the latest climate action plan for the ACT. Policy that uh, the Chief Minister and I announced on Monday that it sets out a considered plan for the ACT to continue on its pathway to zero net emissions by 2045. We have seen this week the most extraordinary misrepresentation of that policy by the Canberra Liberals. Now, Mr Hanson has come in here today and said, we support pragmatic measures, not alarmism. Well, let's look at some of the alarmism that's been peddled by the Canberra Liberals this week. Let's, let's, let's reflect on some of that alarmism, including Mr Hanson in the debate today and said, we don't agree with turning off people's gas. I'd like Mr Hanson to show me where in the strategy it says people's gas will be turned off. The government has made a clear commitment that we need to phase out gas. Natural gas, natural gas is a fossil fuel that is contributing to global warming. We need to move away from natural gas. But the suggestion from the Canberra Liberals that the government is actually going to turn off people's gas is outrageous. If you want to talk about creating alarmism, let's look at what the people across the chamber have been doing all this week in this city. We saw a quote from Mr Coe in the Canberra Times. The reasonable way to achieve any emissions reduction is not to wave a big stick around and to ban people from using their cars and heating their homes. Where in the strategy does the government say it's going to ban people from heating their homes? This is outrageous. This is a disgusting raising of fear in our community that has seen people contacting the radio station saying, what am I going to do when the government comes and removes my gas heater? The government is not going to come and remove people's gas heaters. What we are saying to people is at the end of the life of your product, you know, when they come along 20, 25 years and they actually wear out, because that's what happens to these pieces of machinery, make the smart choice. Transition to electricity. Remove your connection fees for gas have one single connection cost. Know that the price of gas has skyrocketed. It's not what we were told for the last couple of decades, the cheap source of energy. The price of gas has gone up. Gas is no longer the clean source that it used to be. It was relative to black, fired, uh, black coal fired power. But now, compared to 100% renewable electricity, gas is no longer the cleaner fuel that it was once marketed as. Mr Coe has described the new climate strategy as a gross intervention. So what is it for the Liberal Party? Are we going to deal with climate change or is dealing with climate change a gross intervention? Is it a gross intervention to deal with climate change? In the laissez-faire world of the Liberal Party, it's a gross intervention to deal with the most significant environmental challenge facing our planet. That is what we've heard Mr Coe say this week. He said, he said in his remarks, in what was a borderline hysterical interview, that the ACT government is deliberately driving up the cost of petrol. What evidence has he got for that? This is the sort of fear-mongering and disgraceful tactics that we've seen from the Canberra Liberals this week. This does not help anybody in our community move through what are challenging issues. We've had Ms Birch, Ms C. Birch, tweeting that the Chief Minister wants to ban people using their cars on the weekends. That is not the government policy. That is not in the climate strategy. This is outrageous. I mean, it probably is in... It's their own social media echo chamber, and that's probably the saving grace here. But this is not government policy. So I call on the Canberra Liberals to enter in this debate with a degree of integrity, to actually have some integrity... And Mr Hanson's come in and said we should not have alarmism. Well, I completely agree with him. Let's look at who's peddling the alarmism in this city. Now, we had the climate strikers come in yesterday and address the Assembly, and I thank Ms Lakuta, Mr Gupta, Mr Pedersen, Mr Gentleman, Ms Orr, Ms Shane, Ms Stephen Smith and Ms Berry 
for joining me in welcoming them to the assembly and taking the time to listen to them. There was, of course, a remarkable dearth of members from the other side of the chamber who even bothered to come along and listen. A remarkable dearth. Well, I believe Mr Parton walked past on probably on his way out to get lunch and did stop for a minute or two, so credit for that. But the rest of the Campbell Liberals were so busy, apparently, they could not come and listen to the students who had an important point that they wanted to make to the members of this assembly. Mr Hanson was too busy back in his office thinking up mean tweets to direct at the climate strikers. I mean, really? Is that the best thing he's got to do with his time? Surely he can find a better use of his time than dreaming up mean tweets directed at students. So we will continue to put in place sensible policies that produce an orderly transition for the ACT to be a clean, green, renewable city of the future with a striving economic sector based on the industries of the future. We will not resort to the alarmism. We will not be cowed by the outrageous tactics of the Canberra Liberals. We will continue to talk to the community about the important steps that need to be taken to address the most serious environmental issue that this planet faces.